Welcome to A level and EP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from March 2024, paper 1, variant 2. As always, we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of physics and also you can have better understanding of these exam questions. Let's study together, let's improve together. Question 26 says, a source of sound waves with constant frequency moves towards a stationary observer. The observer compares the sound waves arriving at the observer position with the waves emitted by the source of sound. What is detected by the observer? So this question is quite straightforward one. So this is simply based on Doppler effect. So we can simply imagine, first of all, we have source. So this is source of sound waves. And this is approaching observer so we can just imagine observer is standing here let's say the frequency of sound emitted by this source is f naught and frequency observed by this observer let's say that is f1 as in this case source is approaching so it means that f1 has to be greater than f naught the speed of sound is same in the same medium for the same type of waves so it means that if speed is same frequency increase so the lambda observe we can say lambda 1 and here is lambda naught means the emitted one so the lambda 1 in this case this has to be shorter than lambda emitted so we can say this is lambda emitted by the sound then this one we can say observed so this has to be shorter now if you get given options a decreased frequency so this is incorrect no change in frequency incorrect the decreased wavelength of the sound waves yes this one is correct no change in wavelength this is incorrect so the answer for this question is c question 27 says which type of waves cannot be polarized so the first thing we need to understand longitudinal waves cannot be polarized so we can say longitudinal waves that cannot be polarized because they oscillate in one plane so we can say oscillate in one plane in one plane now if you look at the given options so radio waves these are transverse waves they can be polarized so this is not answer sound waves they are longitudinal waves so they cannot be polarized so the answer is b ultraviolet waves they are transverse waves they can be polarized so this is not answer x-rays they are also transverse waves so they can be polarized so the answer is Question 28 says, a beam of light with power P has an area of cross-section capital A. The amplitude of the light waves in the beam is X. The beam of light is then changed to 1 with the same frequency but with an increased amplitude of 4X. And area of cross-section reduced to A by theory. What is the power of the new beam? What is the power of the new beam? So first of all, we need to understand that intensity is equal to K times A square, amplitude squared. So frequency is constant, other variables are constant. So intensity is equal to K times A square. And intensity is also equal to power over cross-sectional area. So this one is amplitude. This A is representing amplitude we can say AMP. So this is amplitude and this one is cross-sectional area. From here we can say that power is equal to intensity times cross-sectional area. Cross-sectional area. Now we can write down this one power this is equal to K times amplitude square X is the amplitude so this is X amplitude square times A. Now if x increase 4 times it means power will increase by 16 times then area decreases by theory it means power will decrease by theory so simply p nu we can write on here so this is one way to answer this question so we can say p nu this one will be equal to 16 times of original p divided by theory 
so this is one way if you understood this one is very nice if it is not clear to you how we got this answer let me explain you this one little bit in detail so if we solve this one in this case our final answer will be equal to 5.3 p now let me explain you this one little bit in detail how we got this answer from this relationship we can write down p over x square times a this is equal to k it means that p original divided by x square times a this has to be equal to p new divided by x new mean new value of amplitude squared times a new a new so these are the points you need to understand from here you can see now uh, this is p naught so simply i can say this one is p this is divided by x squared times a and here is p new we need to find out value of p new x new is 4x so this is 4x square and new area is a by 3 so from here we can simplify we can say p divided by x square times a and here we have p new here we will get 16 x square actually i'm writing all the steps so you can develop your understanding so we can cancel this x square with this one and this a we can cancel with this so simply now you can see here p new this is equal to 16 divided by 3 times p so this is the final answer so this is how you can answer this question in the exam you no need to do all these steps simply if you have understanding of this part you can find the answer so if amplitude increases four times it means power will increase by 16 times if area decreases by three times it means power will decrease by three times so it means 16 divided by three so this is the answer i hope this makes sense to you and if you have any questions please leave your questions in comments and if these videos are helping you like and subscribe and also share with your friends question 29 says two loudspeakers are connected to the same signal generator the signal generator produces a single frequency the loudspeakers face each other so that a stationary sound wave is set up in the region between the loudspeakers a microphone is connected to the CRO and positioned between the two loudspeakers. The microphone is moved along a line joining the two loudspeakers. The signal on the CRO shows five maximum amplitudes as the microphone moves. The microphone moves a distance of 2.0 meters from the position that gives the first maximum to the position that gives the fifth maximum so it is given to us it is starting from the first maximum start from here and it ends at fifth maximum what is the wavelength of the sound wave so we have first maximum then we have four more maximum so it means that distance is equal to two times of wavelength so the wavelength should be 1.0 meter let me explain you this one with the help of figures so you can see actually what is happening so in this case we started loudspeaker from first maximum so this is the first maximum and here we have this is the second maximum and here we have third maximum and here we have fourth maximum and here we have this is fifth maximum and the distance between two consecutive maximum this is lambda by two so this distance is lambda by two this distance is also lambda by two this distance is lambda by two and this distance is also lambda by two and for this question it is given to us the total distance between first and the fifth maximum that is equal to 2.0 meters so we can say this is equal to 2.0 meters so in this case d is equal to four times lambda by two so this is equal to two times of lambda then d is equal to 2.0 so we have lambda that will be equal to 1.0 meter so the answer for this question is so understanding of question is very important maybe some of you will not be able to answer this question the main reason will be you haven't understood the statement of the question so this is telling you start from the first maximum so we are starting from the first maximum and 
end at the fifth maximum so this is our starting and this is our ending so we have five maxima question 30 says two wave sources emit coherent waves which condition must be correct for the coherent waves for coherent waves we need to understand they should have constant phase difference so this is the main condition they should have constant phase difference mean the phase difference between two waves with time should not change and that is of course only possible if they have the same frequency so constant phase difference is the must condition for coherent waves now if you look at given option the waves are emitted in phase is not the answer if waves are emitted in phase and they have different frequencies so they cannot be in phase all the time so there will be no constant phase difference so this is not condition for coherent waves the waves are emitted and move in opposite direction this is also not condition for I mean this will not make two waves coherent means the phase difference between waves will not stay constant so this is also not the answer the waves are emitted with a constant phase difference so they have constant phase difference so this is condition for coherent waves the waves are emitted with the same amplitude this is not condition for coherent waves so the answer is c and this question is very common you need to understand coherent waves must have constant phase difference question 31 says a student sets up an experiment to investigate double slit interference the student uses light of a single wavelength from a laser to illuminate a double slit so that a pattern of interference fringes is observed on the screen the student finds that fringes are very close together what could the student decrease in order to increase the separation of the fringes on the screen so the first thing we need to understand here we are talking about double slit experiment and for double slit experiment we can write on a x this is equal to lambda times capital t a is in this case equal to r and q is equal to capital t and x is fringe separation so simply we can write on x is equal to lambda times capital d divided by a so we can say lambda times q divided by r so what we can decrease so x increase so in order to increase x we have to decrease r we can also increase x by increasing q but question is asking us what can be decreased so if we decrease r it means x will increase so if you look at given options the distance p from the laser to the double slit if we decrease this distance it has no effect the distance q from the double slit to the screen if we decrease q it means x will decrease so if we decrease this one this will decrease so this is also not possible answer the separation r of the slit so if we decrease this one x will increase so this is the answer the wavelength of the light from the laser so if we decrease the wavelength this will also decrease so this is also not possible answer question 32 says what are the definitions of potential difference and electromotive force in terms of energy transfer w and charge q so we need to understand emf is equal to amount of other form of energy converted into electrical energy per unit charge so simply we can say this is the energy transferred per unit charge so we can write down so this is energy transferred from chemical to electrical per unit charge energy transfer per unit charge so this is representing emf so energy transfer is given to us that is w and charge is q so this is w by q and pd is the amount of electrical energy converted into thermal energy or into other forms of energy per unit charge so we can also say this is also w over q so the answer for this question has to be a question says the diagram shows a network consisting of three resistors what is the combined resistance of the network between terminal x and y means between this point and between this point 
so first of all we need to understand this resistance is 2.2 kilo ohms so the total resistance cannot be lower than 2.2 kilo ohms it means a is not possible b is not possible now if you get this combination mean these two resistors connected in parallel we need to understand when resistors are connected in parallel the total resistance is lower than the smallest resistor in parallel so we can look at this one so the r total for parallel it has to be lower than 1.2 kilo ohms so it means that this cannot be the answer because this value is too high so the answer for this question has to be c so if you have clear understanding of physics clear understanding of concepts simply you can look at the question you can find the possible answer without calculations now let's try to do this one step by step so we have our total that has to be equal to 2.2 plus this resistance means the effective resistance of these two resistors in parallel so simply we can say this will be 1.2 times 4.7 divided by 4.7 plus 1.2 so if we solve this one you will get here 2.2 and here you will get about 2.9 so the final answer will be about 3.1 kilo ohms so this is final answer so this is the answer question 34 says a resistor dissipates 25 watts of power when there is a potential difference of 4.0 volts across it what is the resistance of the resistor so first of all simply we can imagine we have a resistor so this is the resistor resistance of this one is capital r and power dissipated by this resistor is equal to 25 watts and pd across this one if we connect voltmeter across this PD across this one is equal to 4.0 volts. Question is asking us to find out what is value of resistance. So simply we need to understand P is equal to V squared divided by R. So from here we can say R, this will be equal to V squared divided by P. V is equal to 4.0, so this is 4 squared divided by 25. And now if we solve this one, so this is 25. If we solve this one, we will get 0.64 ohms. So the answer for this question is P. Question 35 says the diagram shows a cell with the internal resistance connected in parallel with a fixed resistor and a variable resistor. The resistance of the variable resistor is decreased. What happens to the potential difference V across the variable resistor and current I in the variable resistor? So we can simply say first of all this is R, this one is R1, this is R2. So we need to understand as these two resistors they are connected in parallel. So the PD across these two resistors is the same. Now we need to understand what is the effect of decrease in R2 on the total resistance of this combination. So in this case R total will decrease we can understand this one with the help of equation let's say r is the total resistance of this combination so we can say 1 over r will be equal to 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 so if this value decreases, it means overall this will increase but this remains constant so it means 1 over r overall increases if 1 over r increases it means r decreases so we can say r will decrease now we can replace this circuit with a different one so with equivalent circuit we can replace this one so this is one over r and these two resistors we can replace with one single resistor so this is one single resistor and this resistance is capital r as capital r decreases it means that current in the circuit will increase because emf will be equal to i times r plus capital r so we can say i will be equal to emf divided by small r plus capital r if this go down this value has to go up so current in the circuit will increase now if you look at pd across this one let's say the pd across this one is v and PD across this one we can say V lost so we can also write down EMF will be equal to V lost plus V and V lost V lost is I times small r 
and V is I times capital R. As in this case, I increases, R is constant, it means V lost increases. If V lost increases, it means V has to decrease. So, the V decreases. So, in this case, this V will decrease. And current in this case, current in the circuit increases. So, the current passing through this one also will increase. Current passing through this one will also increase. So, it means that answer for this question should be B because V decreases, I increases, but they do not decrease and increase by the same amount. So, I should increase. So, the answer for this question is B. Let's try to understand a little bit more, especially about current, why current increase means why this current I increase. In order to answer this one, we can simply say, let's say current passing through this one, let's say this current is I1 and this current is I. And total current, let's say this current total, this one is I0. Now we have already discussed V decreases. So the V across this one decreases. So we can say V is equal to I1 times R. R is fixed. V decreases. It means I1 decreases. Mean current passing through this resistor decreases. So how about current passing through this resistor? So the remaining current means here we have I, this one has to be equal to I0 minus I1. As I1 decreases and this current increases, so this one is I1. This current increases, this current decreases. How about I? This has to increase. So that's the reason we have chosen current increases. So this value of I has to increase. I hope this makes sense to you. If it is still not clear, leave your questions in comments and if these videos are helping you, like and subscribe and if you are looking for more resources and one-to-one -one help, join Patreon. On Patreon, you will see a lot of resources. Question 36 says, a radioactive source produces a beam of alpha particles in a vacuum. The average current caused by the alpha particles in the beam is 1.5 times 10 to minus 9 amperes. The beam is incident on a metal target. What is the average number of alpha particles hitting the metal target in a time of 3.0 seconds? So we have current, we have given time, so we can find out the total charge. So simply we can say in this case, Q will be equal to I times D, I times D and Q we can say this is equal to N times small Q, Q is small Q is the charge on single alpha particle. So we can say I times D. So we need to find out value of N number of alpha particles, average number of alpha particles. So we have I times D divided by Q. I is equal to 1.5 times 10 to minus 9 amperes and time is 3 seconds, 3.0 seconds and the charge on one alpha particle is 2 times of the charge on single electron, 2 times 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs and if we solve this one, in this case we will get 1.4 times 10 to 10. So, these number of alpha particles will hit the matter target in a time of 3 seconds. So, this is our answer. So, the answer should be C. So, C is the right answer. Question 37 says the charge carries in a metal wire are free electrons. Which statement about the charge of each free electron is correct? The magnitude of the charge increases with the potential difference across the wire. It does not depend on potential difference because charge is intrinsic property of electron. The magnitude of the charge is zero unless there is potential difference across the wire. The charge on electron is the same. There is PD or there is no PD. So this statement is also incorrect. The sign and magnitude of the charge do not depend on the potential difference. So this statement is correct. 
the sign of the chart depends on the potential difference across the wire this statement is also incorrect so the answer for this question is c question 38 says which flavors of quark have charge plus 2 by theory e so we need to understand top quark charm quark and up quark they have charge plus 2 by theory e so they have charge plus 2 by theory e and bottom quark so this is something you need to remember or you need to understand this one bottom strange quark and down quark they have same charge they have charge minus 1 over theory e now if you look at given options charm quark it has charge plus 2 by 3 this is correct strange this is incorrect top quark it has charge plus 2 by 3 so this is correct bottom has no so this is also correct actually so this is also correct because it doesn't have it doesn't have charge plus 2 by 3 so the answer for this question should be a this one is right this one is right but this one is incorrect this one is right so this is not answer this one is incorrect this one is incorrect this one is correct but this is incorrect so this is also not answer this is incorrect this one is incorrect this one is incorrect this one is also incorrect so this is also not answer so this is the main concept you need to understand question 39 says an unstable nucleus of an element decays by emitting an alpha particle or a beta minus particle to become a nucleus of a different element the nucleus is also unstable and emits an alpha particle or a beta minus particle this process continues until an isotope of the original element is produced so this is important point isotope of the original element is produced it means proton number is the same so what is the minimum possible number of these particles emitted minimum possible number of particles emitted means alpha particle and beta minus particles so first of all we can simply imagine we have nucleus x it has atomic number z and it has mass number a if it emits one alpha particle so we can say this is new nucleus if it emits one alpha particle so let's say this is alpha particle so its atomic number will decrease by two but its mass number will remain same now this one decreases by two we have to bring back this one to z so it means that beta minus particle so if beta minus two beta particles are emitted so this one should be plus two so in this case how many particles are emitted we have one alpha particle and we have two beta minus particles so total theory number of particles are emitted minimum possible so this is minimum possible number it can be more than that but we are talking about here minimum possible number of particles emitted so the answer for this question is b question 40 says a nucleus of carbon 10 decays by beta emission to form a nucleus of boron 10 for this decay process what is the change to a nucleon and what is the change in the quark composition of the nucleon so first of all simply we can start with carbon 10 so we have carbon 10 this decays into boron 10 an atomic number of boron is 5 as you can see here and in this case as proton number decreases so this one has to be beta plus particle means positron as this is antiparticle so there must be electron neutrino so in this case proton number is decreasing so it simply means that it simply means that 6 to 5 so proton becomes neutron because mass number is same so we can simply say in this case proton becomes neutron and proton has two up quarks and one down quark and neutron has one up quark and two down quarks so it simply means that one up quark becomes one down quark
So this is the change in the nucleon and this is the change in quark composition means up quark becomes down quark. Now if you get given options proton to neutron yes this is correct down to up no proton to neutron yes up to down yes so then so far this one has to be B. neutron to proton wrong neutron to proton incorrect so C D and A are not possible answers I hope these questions make better sense and if these videos are helping please like and subscribe and also share with your friends and if you need more help you can join patreon if you're looking for more resources you can also join patreon and if you have any questions you can leave your questions in comments and I will try to answer as soon as possible see you in next video